Hello, it's James here. Paramount have asked me to build a real transformer for the upcoming Bumblebee movie. It's going to be four meters long, a meter and a half wide, and transform into Bumblebee that will be over three meters tall. So I can build all the mechanics, but this is a pretty big project, so I'm going to need some help. Hi James. This is Kyla, who's a prop builder. So if you're going to make the mechanics, then I'll make the external panels and cosmetics using various materials, so it looks really good. Wait, we've got to build the whole thing? we better design it. The chassis for this has got to be pretty strong because it's got to hold the whole weight of a transformer so I'm making it out of box section steel. My welding's not that good so I'm putting some metal brackets on and I'm pre-drilling all the holes so I don't have to do them afterwards. They've got paint on those so I probably need to grind all of that off. Yep, still doing stick welding. I'm learning as I go but I'm still not that great so I'm not going to show you my welds. Now this is going to be quite a big machine and plywood is stronger than steel pound for a pound. It's also going to be pretty chunky so it looks like a giant robot. So lots of this is made of laminated plywood. Yes it is glued as well as screwed before everyone starts panicking and you can see some of the bigger holes there that I've taken some big axles through. This piece that I'm making is going to make the main base for Bumblebee, so of course it needs to be painted silver to look like the internals of a giant robot. So we're making a car, but what wheels are we going to put on it? Well Beetle wheels are pretty big, they're about two foot in diameter, so I found these which are wheelchair wheels. Now they're designed to be supported from one side, they've got this handy rail on the outside where you push yourself along, which we're going to use to put the hubcap on, and these are super heavy duty off-road ones, so hopefully they're strong enough to support the whole thing. Now I've knocked the bearings out already, which did have a 12mm bore in, and now we've got about a 25mm hole that I can put a bigger axle in. I've got proper bearing blocks, the sort of thing you'd have on a go-kart, so they should be pretty strong, and of course those are bolted to the steel. So my wheel's bolted on with lock nuts, there's a bearing block bolted to the steel and the axle goes all the way through here to the other side. So we've got another bearing block that's recessed so that the axle's level and that's cantilevered against the one mounted on the steel. But will the wheelchair wheels be strong enough to hold a whole transformer? It looks like they are. Yep, I can't see the spokes buckling, so that's good. So these are the Transformers ankles, so now we just need to build the next bit that hinges on these pivot points. That's right, it's loads more lovely plywood laminated together and painted silver. Yeah, these parts are more than strong enough for the project, and obviously much lighter than steel or some metal, and we can make them nice and chunky, so they look like bits of a robot. So down here we've got these big bearing blocks to 20mm axles for the pieces that pivot through the wood here, and some of them are fixed, and the pivot and the bearing is going to be on the piece of leg. So let's get all of that stuff assembled. Underneath the bottom here, we've got the bottom of two pneumatic cylinders that are going to push the legs up and they're on a steel tube with some nice end caps on. Right, here's one leg together. Just got to do the other one and we'll put some air in it. The mechanism of the legs is a bit like a weirdly angled scissor lift and that means I only need one pneumatic cylinder in each leg and that will bring the body up eventually to exactly the right angle. To 
so both legs are together we've got a few more plates and stuff to hold some of these pieces together so they're locked together but on the whole it's looking pretty robust and we've got lots of metal in there and bearings there's some 3d printed bearing blocks but we can always upgrade those if they're not strong enough but i think they're going to be fine right let's put some air in it and see what happens up we go and let's see how strong that is and the hoses aren't very good no it's come off Yeah, we've got a lot of leaky hoses, but hopefully that's going to be strong enough. Hooray! But wait a minute, we've got to make an entire prop car as well, and that's why Kyla's here. So she's cutting all the templates out of foam, having spent quite a few days making them. Our car, of course, needs to have windows as well, but we don't want people to look inside and see the transformer before it's time, so we're using tinted acrylic. What are you doing, Kyla? I am drilling the hole out for the handle. Just doing it outside because it's very messy. What's that? It's a car door. So we've got a whole door made of foam. Which looks good. And the handle. And what's on the back? So what have we got there? So we needed to reinforce it. We could have done it using wood, but we decided to use insulation foam so that um, we could actually cut out slots to run the aluminium supports through. So we've got some extrusion there that's going to mount it on the frame so it can be mechanical and open like a gold wing door. So what's next? Well, foam is a pretty porous material, so I'm going to have to seal it before I go on to painting it. Yeah, we're using the proper good sealer here that's mixed with white spirit and absolutely stinks. You put on about two or three coats, but it does give you a really, really good finish. And of course, Bumblebee's yellow, so we've used absolutely tins and tins of yellow paint to paint the entire car. The details are hand painted and the doors are a bit yellow and glary at the moment but they're going to be dirty down once we've done all of it so we can get a consistent look and feel over the whole car and it looks like a dirty old beetle that you'd find on a scrap heap just like in the movie. Yep, it's back to me again and more metal parts. Cutting through metal with an angle grinder is quite a satisfying experience because you feel like a real engineer making a real giant robot. Yes, it's another bit of welded steel which is going to make Bumblebee's body, or the main hinge at least, his hips where he lifts up. Whoa. Right, so that's now the body piece that lifts up when the whole thing goes up. Whoa, it's getting pretty heavy, so that's going to make it really tall. So this gets pushed up by these bearings at the knees. The 
And now we've got these two steel rods, which are mounted on bearings at the knees and bearing blocks at the top, and those are gonna push the body up, hopefully. It's a bit of a tight leverage angle, but we'll see how it goes. Yep, that was pretty close. I kind of measured where the ceiling was, but that's a bit closer than I thought it'd be. So Bumblebee's feet are going to be down here. These are his knees. Obviously, he's going to have cosmetic panels covering him. And then this is his waist and his body and his head's going to be up there about another meter. Right, that's the end of video part one. Thanks again to Paramount for making it possible to build Bumblebee, the real transformer. Next time, I'm going to be building more mechanics. And I'm going to be building more car parts. So don't forget to check out part two and there's going to be three build videos in this series altogether. Alright, that's all for now.